Well, welcome on in, everybody. Welcome, welcome. This is the 2024 Spring Smash Brothers Conference Qualifiers by Vessel. We are so happy to be welcoming week number two of these qualifiers for 200 plus high schools in North Carolina. High schoolers fighting it out for a chance at 25 thousand dollars my name is pyro j i'm joined here with muse and muse i mean we're talking big money for these high school matches i know you played some smash in your past how about that cash yeah i mean i wish i played for twenty five thousand. You know, that would have been great back in the day you know i walked home half the time with like ten dollars and then maybe ten dollars in store credit right mm -hmm. <laughs> so i mean that's a lot of money which is uh you know, really, really nice for and validating for a lot of these students. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome because I, I agree, you know, it was kind of like, a, oh, this is a fun pastime. Now it's like, OK, let's sweat. Let's lean forward in our gamer chair and win some big bucks. Of course, this is the second week of qualifiers. But today, folks, we have teams that have been, been performing very, very well. If we want to take a look at the matches we have in store. For some teams that have worked pretty well so far muse yeah you know when you're taking on these early weeks it's always really nice to just come out ahead <laughs> if mm. you're going to end up in any of these standings once you end up getting to those playoffs you're going to get better seedings you're going to end up just having kind of that easier path to your bracket so the most that you can do now the better off you are going to be once playoffs happen so seeing all 2-0 games that also means that we'll probably get some really close games on top of it yeah. on the day yeah, some really close games, maybe some really interesting fighter duels. I'm just looking forward to getting to it. So, folks, again, our first match, Hoke County versus Lumberton High School. I say we start getting into it, seeing what these fighters are capable of, because with 200 plus high school teams, who knows? We could be watching a future champion right here, right now now and all right k Roll and link is our first matchup muse what do you make of it yeah this is kind of a fun matchup especially i'm assuming that these matches are also yeah they're done on wi-fi just kind of seeing uh you know looking at it k Roll is an absolute menace you can see he always has really good frame data his belly armor is also just incredible in any of these types of matchups it's going to be hard for link to approach but link He's going to be able to zone it out. You even got a nice big stage here with Kalos to start it off. So both of these characters are just going to kind of throw what they can at them and see. Ooh. Oh, instantly. Yeah, just K-Rule not able to recover there instantly. You know, not able to use this up to, to get back to stage. Yeah, a little bit of difficulty there. You discussed that zoning from Link, and we're already starting to see that. Check out the combos as well, already matching up on the damage. But here comes that cannonball. I was, I'm always worried about bigger characters, but I'm really interested in the projectile usage because I feel like that cannonball could be a great tactic for K. Roll. Well, that is if they can stay on the stadium. Almost got hit by that up B. Has to use their own recovery to get back to the stage. Yeah, the nice part about Cannon and everything, the typical plan, pattern that you see with K. Roll is he'll do like a short hop side B into the neutral B cannon just to kind of mm. have that wall of projectiles, and then he's going to end up running at you. And as you can see, he ends up just taking the stock on Link and you're back into a even game, at least for stocks, but down percent from K. Roll. Yeah, you wonder how long that's going to last as K. Roll gets closer and closer to yeah, the blast there. zone. <laughs> Yeah, recovery after recovery here into the cannon they go. And it does feel like Link playing a bit more passively, trying to make sure these hits actually happen. A down air into K roll 170. I mean, it's an impressive amount of damage to rack up in the belly slam. There we go, racking up the damage and getting Link as they recover back on the stage. Yeah, and that's the problem with these big heavy characters. See, at 171, there was also a point where he's throwing out his, uh, or K. Roll was throwing out his crown. Link ran up, went to go do a, uh, a jab attack, and he doesn't actually interrupt the K. Roll. And so he's able to get his pattern off, able to get him down to like 70%. Just a down smash on the side of the stage, and 
you know, he takes that stock from Link, so still very even game here from both of these players. Oh my god, hey, you mentioned the down smash, and we're starting to see more and more of it. I think Block Boy knows just how available it is. Link racking up some major damage here, and the punish factor from Block Boy has been fantastic as Link gets back onto the stage, so starting to try and edge guard. They are Block Boy, but Ow, they're just trying to gain some stage control themselves, working from left to right here. Again, that down smash comes through, but not able to connect on it. Yeah, again, you're just seeing the absolute power of K roll as he ends up trying to come back. Able to stay alive, good DI coming off. Nice. <laughs> Allowing it to get that bounce, letting Link go really low, able to recover back on Kalos. And yeah, he's playing incredibly well right here, just at this such high percent play. Able to get a cannon. Oh, he. He had a really good cannonball earlier where he shot Link right in there, but not able to get it there at this time. Oh my gosh, you wonder which one is going to be that last blow. Of course, if the down smash hits here, it's going to be punished, but instead the upbeat does connect here. That's been kind of the bread and butter for Mr. Smile, and that's going to be the one to win the first round. Yeah, that little bit of a delay there as he's getting sent off. You know, you might be able to DI out of that and not end up getting uh, or losing that last stop. No, really nicely done by the link. I know I was focusing a lot on K Rule just because, like, K Rule, especially for Wi Fi, that's a character I also just know really well mm. in general because he, he can be very abusive in those, uh, in, in okay, just online ah. and everything. But with Link, you know, uh, what was nice with uh, this link in particular, again, using Boomerang to kind of just zone them out able to, you know, keep his distance well on K. Rule and not afraid to go off and edge guard him with the pogo stick, you know, the down yeah. the down arrow with the sword. Yeah. Uh, always really, really nice to see. As like a casual player, that down air, whether it's Link or Young Link, that's like my go-to, you know? It's like, I get flung up way too often, and it's like, you want to fling me up? I'll come down with something even better. I don't mind that. And then you end up getting one, two, even three as you go going on top of them. It can be pretty nice. And again, I mean, you talk about the zoning here that uh, Link is able to do with the boomerang and even the air if they really want to. I'm curious. I feel like we didn't see much of the crown from K-Roll, and I, I'm curious because, like, why do you think that is? Or do we need to see more of it? Honestly, I think that the K-Roll was getting pressured too much in most mm. of the matchups, where, or, like, during the matchup, where the Link was using Bomb really well, just being able to drop on it. He was also just trying to stay above the K-Roll as much as possible. So with that big stage with Kalos, there's not a good amount of opportunity, because, like I was saying, the K-Roll typically wants to do that um, short hop, side B, neutral mm, yeah. B, and then just run at you, right? Because this way here, he's setting up that wall, and it's this moving wall, and then you got a crocodile chasing that wall after you, and <laughs> you're not really sure what to do. Yeah. And so he just wasn't able to really set that up because Link was just mm. staying above him so much during the matchup. Okay, yeah, so great disruption play from the Link player. Let's see if we get more of that, if the K-Roll can stop that steady pressure with the, uh, the, the belly blockade. Game number two, round number two between these two tough fighters. I want to make sure that we still get the same fighters, and okay, we do. And those are the still the same, despite them switching sides. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, in this case, what I'd want to see people do uh, is, again, set up way more of the crown and cannon combos. And see, you can already see he's starting out with the crown, but, uh, you know, with Link, just continue doing your game plan. You do have dry plats here, so it's going to be a little bit tougher, um, but you at least have somewhere to land where you can still be above the game. And nice start here, just able to do that down air, spiking him down and up will stop Link. Weirdly, we have some influence here, uh, Muse. We spoke about the crown, we spoke about the down air, and those seem to be the most prominent attacks thus far. Uh, except for the fact that we're trading blows there. Okay, boomerangs start to zone again. What, what I'm curious about ooh, with the link is you cannot get complacent because we saw this big lead gathered in round number one, and then all of a sudden, block boys started connecting, especially on that down smashes. So what can Link do to sort of Hold on to that composure. He could be in the form of some edge guarding here as Block Boy just cannot get back on the platform. Really struggling here. It takes a lot of height to get back on. 
Yeah, nice job going high there as much as uh, to get around the link where where he needs to. Especially with the game rule, I'd like to see him stay under the tripod a little bit more and just start throwing out projectiles. Like here, you don't need to run here, you can just like just go for it, you know, just stay for the projectiles. But I mean I guess it works with the dash attack allowing him to take the stock on the link. Part of it's just confidence, I think, that we're starting to see out of Block Boy. It's like, yeah, yeah, I don't need to go for this, but I, I still can. And that's a bit of a flop there from Mr. Smile. Again, I talked about not being complacent, not taking risks that you don't need to. And that felt unnecessary for Mr. Smile, but responding with vengeance, they are. He pre-jumped and then he wanted to get the scoop with the upbeat on the way back. But because he pre-jumped, he didn't have his jump went too low and just killed oh. him. Yeah, it was really unfortunate, so, mm. but this way here with the K-Roll, you know, he's able to take that back and it's still just an even game. Oh gosh, yeah, these dash attacks are just too lethal. Oh, what a recovery though. Mr. Smile, not giving in quite yet. We're already done to that last stock. I feel like we got here so quickly. Couple smashes there from our K-Roll block boy. At this point, just kind of stay on the stage, getting hit by more projectiles. Another recovery comes through. That down smash does not connect. Or Link, but the boomerang continues that zone play. Oh, got to be very careful getting back into the stage here. Here's the grab. There's the throw. Connecting on the boomerang. Send them away, Mr. Smile. Get him out of here. Definitely working up the damage. Yeah, the Link is doing a really nice job, too, just knowing that the K roll just has to have that very linear recovery. Even though it's a very, very long recovery, it's still just straight up, right? So. He's able to cover it with the bombs, with the Z drops, just straight down, able to do it. But the grab and that back throw is going to end up killing. So now we're tied up one to one. Wow. I mean, what an effort from Block Boy there. You end up dodging the bomb, dodging the net attack and then the grab throw for the finisher i think realistically that's block boy on the k roll learning and adapting as we go because you mentioned that recovery it can be very linear and so our link mr smile was really committing to those bomb throws to those attacks as soon as the recovery comes through to try and read the recovery but k roll adapting well switching off and getting that grab at the end yeah, the K-Roll definitely had a nice counter pick on that stage. Mm. Going the triplats was the great choice there. He doesn't have as much of an open space with Kalos where the Link is just able to zone him out or just really have a lot of air mobility over him. Instead, he can just kind of sit under the plat, see what the Link needs to do. And instead of just getting kind of like shark from above, he's able to just use those to his own defenses. So really nicely job. Good adaptation and tight game. I know it is tied. You mentioned the two and oh teams. We might just get some good matches and you were definitely right already. One to one in the first couple of rounds. As we get into this next round, round number three, I would love to see what the K roll does to have more stage presence. It feels like they're most vulnerable when they start getting hit off the stage. And uh, this length of Mr. Smile just gets better and better at edge guarding. Still a three plat, but in a different format this time around, Muse. Yeah, no, town is always kind of fun, especially just you have the shifting platform. So, you know, you're going to have those three at first and then you're going to have the move. So definitely a lot of adaptation from the players. Already 50% though on the K rule, make that 70. So Link coming to play. Oh, and I love that adaptation that we're seeing out of Mr. Smile. Don't wait for the bomb throw. Be proactive about it. Throwing down before we see that vertical recovery. Oh, the bomb is dodged. Mr. Smile again being so proactive on these edge guards. It's a risk, but will the reward be found? Nice job. Nice, nice edge guard. Keeping the cannon just over the stage means that the link can't go high. He has to grab it there. And then Blockboy just reading the getup attack. But. Link able to get to right back with his upbeat, knocking him off. So again, I love these types of close games. The yeah. past two have both been the last stop, last hit pretty much as well. So maybe we're going to get a third one. Exactly. And, and seeing that swift response out of Mr. Smile is so clear. Uh, it, it's so great. And then I wanted to say it's so clear that Mr. Smile has a great look on this Link because those up Bs with that finishing blow, just getting that last great hit on the King K roll is so pristine, it's sublime. They've got it locked in. Yeah, getting these fast kills on a K roll is nothing to sneeze at. So, really, really nicely done from Mr. Smile. Now, also, just first, I, I 
kept forgetting to say this too, that the length that he's going with on the Nair from Link is so nice to see. There's a lot of... Oh my gosh. That's, <laughs> all right, I give him a compliment <laughs> in the SDs. But that's a t like, telltale sign of somebody who knows what they're doing with their character. It's just mm. the spacing that they use on their bread and butter boots. Mm. That Nair spacing with Link with Christy. Let's see if we see more of that to finish out this last stock of K. Roll. It is big advantage for Mr. Smile, but we've seen this K. Roll get up to 170, 180 before. They're not going to get to it this time. Mr. Smile, a completely different strategy in round three. So aggressive, taking control and getting this win. Uh, if he cancels the neutral be just a few frames earlier as he's trying to land on that platform too with the shield button he could probably get the shield out of that and then he's going to put link in a really really bad spot so unfortunate from block boy there but you know link just doing a really nice job not a usual character as well link is not a very common character in mm. ultimate so it's nice to see somebody who's picking up the character and, and doing well with him I always love to see, like, one of the most prominent figures in Nintendo games, like, just not be common <laughs> in, like, a Smash game. It's like, everyone knows Link, but do you actually play the character? And uh, to this time, you can. And I love the fact that there's so much variety in the kit of Link, as well as the things that you mentioned, the spacing with the neutral air, the fact that these up Bs are timed so well, and... I love the early onset of that round as well from the link. They, they were tired of edge guarding and waiting for K roll to get back to the edge. Instead, they were taking the battle to him. Muse, I didn't like the down air into the SD, but other than that, it looked good to me. Yeah, and it's funny too, where if you look at the tier list, we have three links in this game, and this is the worst link of Ooh. the three, is, is regular <laughs> link or traditional link, whatever you want to call them. So it, it's nice to see that, uh, you know, being able to perform well, someone who's clearly put in a lot of time into their character and uh, probably enjoys the franchise, you know, that's usually how most people get their start with their characters. So uh, Seems like, like it. People, yeah, some people just like the funny crocodile, though. You know, these are <laughs> high schoolers. I don't know how many games they've played with King K. Rule in them, but, uh, you know, credit where credit is due. <laughs> We'll give the credit, I think. Yeah, um, credit as well to Lumberton because they take that win out of this best of three. That is the first win in the overall series. So Lumberton versus Hoke, not quite done, but from Mr. Smile on that link, getting the first win for Lumberton. Let's head on to the next part of this set and see how our fighters match up once again. It's typical for these high school teams to have uh, different players set up and get ready to go. Seems like from Lumberton, we're going to continue to see that link, but how about the switch up to Little Mac? Little Mac is an interesting choice. Uh, definitely one of the harder characters. Uh, this is not a favorable matchup. Uh, Little Mac usually doesn't do the best into most sword characters, and especially a sword character that has a lot of zoning tools. Yeah, because he's going to run under these platforms and he's going to boomerang. Mm, yeah, we're all ready to already seeing that range play come through big time quick dashing though from little mac it, it appears as if they're trying to just be unpredictable and, and scurrying around the stage allows them to move quickly but i haven't really seen them connect on some of these attacks ace of aces on this link is is doing a good job of shielding at the right time at least so far yeah he doesn't need to it's little mac he's now got that ko meter he's gonna look out he's dead see just, that's all you gotta do. That's that's little back. That's how you play this character. It's just you keep getting beat up for a while, and then your opponent's at twenty percent, and you run up in KO steps. That was so perfect. I was gonna bring that up, and then he just did it. So good job. He's reading my mind. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely a good sign from what I know from you already, Muse. And uh, well, we start to see that KO meter already start to ramp up. And okay, I think maybe the idea is remaining on the stage and remaining alive. He can stay alive though with his KO meter still up. You know, this is the hard part about Little Mech is he's gonna need to recover there. He does. But look, KO meter about to come up. If he if he can sit back to stage here, he, this is he might go up too. 2 0 with just KO punches. No, oh, is it gonna happen? Oh. Ace of Aces, are you gonna let this happen? It appears not. No connect on the KO, and yeah, 
No problem for Ace of Aces. I think there he was trying to do like a quick turnaround side B, and unfortunately he just misinputted, ended up putting just the regular neutral B to get the KO punch, and then, yeah, unfortunately it's gonna have to reset. But he's still, you know, very even on stocks. Now he's gonna play a little bit more aggressive, just because he's gotta either work that KO meter back up or work up some of the percent on this lane. I gotta be honest, I can never play a little Mac. I have too much anxiety. There's no way it would work up to one hit and I have to land it. I'm messing that up every time. So it kind of works too to those little Mac players for relying on that one hit. And by the way, it is coming up. Ace of Aces. Uh, we saw a lot more range play early on on the round, but being denied of that stage control is Ace of Aces. Little Mac trying to stay center, center of stage and reel and bait. Ace of Aces closer and closer in. Okay, the up attack did help. Boomerang to keep him away. Doesn't want to get KO'd here. They're a bit close, making me nervous. Oh, still that KO meter alive, Muse. So looking for it. He's just trying to come in. He misses. He whips, and he actually does get the punish from the side smash from Link. So you know, a little bit tough. It's kind of how you have to just play this matchup, right? Usually, Little Mac can run in, do some jabs, run in, do some tilts, run in, or even like charge a smash attack. But you know, when you're against a sortie with this many projectiles, mm. it's a lot harder, and you have to rely on that KO. We could see that still come through. Link at 107. His damage still working up, but oh yeah, on the other end, things are getting a little bit scary nice. here for XR. But we've got the up, and that's going to take them out. Even on stock, this is still winnable for a little map. Oh, oh, I had <laughs> to you say, say it. No. <laughs> so, so okay, <laughs> that was a lot. That was a lot that happened there. So, with with the link there. Right, or, or sorry, I should say Little Mac. He changed the game plan, which was awesome to see. Great, great coaching. Uh, great, great job from XR. Just able to change that game plan where when when you can't rely on KO meter, the other thing that you want to end up doing with Little Mac is you do want to end up just running in and going for those smash attacks. Just spot mm. and smash attack, spot and smash attack. Use your frame data, abuse what that means, right? Mm. Abuse the fastness of your smash moves. And he was able to do that with Link. Caught him off guard, bad DI, he dies at like 80 on an up smash. However, he then got sent off stage, and I think he meant to do, again, side B, or it looked like he was trying to do an up smash at Link. Ends up inputting up B because he's off stage instead of switching to side B, and he just ends up getting that SD. And that's the unfortunate issues that you can have with Little Mac, is once you're off stage, you cannot panic. Oh, man. Yeah, I think there was a little bit of that in. And I think from beginning to end, if you're going to play Little Mac, you cannot panic. You've got to be icy. You, you've got to make sure if that first strategy of the KO punch is going to have to connect, that you've got to connect. You cannot panic. So during those moments, that can be the failure. Um, we're getting a theme of these SDs as well. Lumberton on the link. That's That, that was their thing that plagued them earlier and now it's happening on the other side to the little mac so lumberton on this link continues to succeed for them they're one and oh in this particular series let's see if this next one works out well for them as we move into round two let make sure okay we get the same matchup once again so uh, let's see if we start seeing those smash attacks at adaptation or a return a return to norm for our little mac now, this, this is the scary part. So whenever you see a Lumac, uh, the other things you typically want to stay or ban like any of the stages that are these long stages, FD Kalos and like Battlefield, um, just because he can also shark you so fast under plats. We don't see an FD ban. So here, Lumac's able to bring it here. And this is where you're going to start seeing some of the power of this character, just able to do these massive smash attacks. Again, Link's already at 83. Ah, getting that spacing for those range attacks appears to be more and more difficult for the link. And a perfect KO from the little Max. So far, so good. Yeah, and he ends up dropping shield just a little bit too early. Just expecting a smash attack, but the little Mac doing a nice job pressing, you know, just being able to do that KO punch. Now this little Mac is really, really starting to come online because he's got, like, Link has nowhere to run. Little Mac can just kind of run into him. And, you know, if he's not able to do in zone with Boomerang, then Magnus is going to be able to control the game. 
I do think from our link of Aces Vases, uh, being unpredictable is going to be the key as well because a lot of these punches are starting to land. However, the counter with the uppy, that was the bread and butter earlier from L Lumberton to get the kills on K-Roll. And I guess it works on Little Mac too. Yeah, and you can see right now he's just doing these dash attacks into Smash. And now he's just trying to get Link and just trying to get any sort of damage. Any touch from Little Mac is going to be a touch of death at this percent too, uh, especially for Link. As we can see right there, able to get it. Now he's got a little bit of charge though on that KO meter. So, you know, he may be looking to take an early stop here from Link. Yeah, and what can Link do to resist that effort? I think at this point, you've got to start to work up the damage and quickly maybe start to take a more aggressive approach instead of just waiting for the attacks and shielding out of them. Trying to get that damage up. That is 28. Make it 40 as they go center stage. Trying to dodge backwards. Get that boomerang back out. A lot of options being utilized here from the link. From the link here, what I would want to see from him is just looking to set up with bomb, looking to set up with boomerang. He does end up getting a nice SD, not able to grab the ledge there from Little Mac. So now he's just going to take a minute. No. KO punch anywhere online, so the Little Mac is just going to have to rely on running in and doing smash attack where he can, but Link, really, really nice job starting to take this defensive position, starting to throw out more boomerangs, but still, 109% is going to be an uphill battle. It will indeed. So many of these attacks have to be precise. The Link, they do recover. They're not be allowing for that shield, getting away from that one attack. Very small hop there to get on the other side, back down, oh... Oh, that up just didn't connect, but that up he's still being so useful, coupled with the boomerang. Up to 50 damage, the path to victory, it, it's there, but it's still uphill. Oh, that was beautiful. That was a nice, nice fake out too. Just forcing the link to drop the shield there from the charge side. And then actually, once he sees the shield drop, that's when he's able to let it go. So really, really nice read on the little max. That's what you have to do when you have a character that you know, it's typically seen a little bit lower on that tier list, and you're kind of in a bad matchup, a character that has, you know, three projectiles. Uh, nice, nice adaptations from the low. I feel like as soon as you saw him use that stage, you were like, oh, okay, this is much better for Little Mac. I think we're about to see the pummeling here. So that makes me really curious. What are we going to see on stage three? Is that going to favor the link to bounce back or... Will we see Hoke finally get this win and will even out the series? Um, I, I almost don't know what to expect for this next stage. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be a bit tougher to, you know, uh, with, um, with like Link and Little Mac, it's, I would like to see both of these guys try to edge guard a little bit more. Mm. I think they are getting a little bit scared because, you know, Wi-Fi or whatever it might be with the switches, or maybe the connection might be, you know, we've seen a couple of missed inputs, we've seen a couple of SEs. So here, especially if you're a link, one of the best things you can do is just run up to ledge, plant that bomb, because then you end up preventing the regular get-up attack from Little Mac. So mm. if you can just do some of those setups, and Little Mac, again, because of the frame data, he's able to actually do down tilt, and down tilt is really, really good at just trying to keep people off the stage. Mm -hmm. And Little Mac staying on the stage as well, because I agree if that edge guarding starts to come into play for the link, it's going to be trouble for the Little Mac. So let, let's get into it. I want to see round three. I think we're ready. We're good to go. Round three. And again, Lumberton up 1-0 in the set. So if we three, see the win from the link two, here, one, could be go. all she wrote. Back to the same stage views. Oh, it gets even more interesting. We got that shield dodge there. Think again, trying to create space on this stadium. Boomerangs out and about at the same time. Let's get that connect. Onto the little magazine, trying to charge forward. Shield and getting back, creating that space and little back. I mean, even on damage, KO meter is now online, so this is working out the strategy so far. A little Mac closing that gap, getting that distance just a little bit more shortened. X 
Azar, left to right, back on the stage. Ace of Aces, bomb out. Center of the field, and XR says, fine, you want to go that route? No way, that's fine. That's exactly what you need to do. attack as well from the link because it creates so much range around them. This um, XR character just loves to short hop around left to right wherever they want to go and just weren't able to do it. I'm around. So we're back. Added here. Up B once again. It's a base boomerang again. Okay. Whether it's neutral air or forward air, Ace of Ace is able to short hop. Let Little Mac come in. That was a charge up smash. That sends Link away. Stage here. Distance taking advantage. I'll be there again. And that is just been the most lethal component for Ace of Aces. And oh, XR just cannot respond. Distance back in the up B. It is just hit after hit. This is nearly flawless from Ace of Aces. Does have to worry a little bit about that KO, but I don't see a worry in the world for our Link. What an attack! And not even a recovery from XR. A nearly flawless run for Lumberton. So much more difficult. Really, really good adaptation from the Link. Just staying calm, just being able to. Go back to his game plan, right? Go back to the game plan, counter the character as much as possible, look for those projectiles, and instead, you know, try and get that victory, which he was able to do. Awesome. Awesome work there. I gotta say. Um, and apparently that was the link from Hoke. We're just learning. So, hey, you know, we're learning as we go here. Shout out to the link on both sides, apparently. That, that's quite the coincidence there, Muse. Um, but either way, it was a great response out of the link back on Pokemon Stadium, but said, you know what? This can be my stage as well. And I'm gonna show that right here on my second stock. I'm not gonna lose a single damage point loved what we saw there and we're getting what we asked for use a close series indeed because for lumberton and hoke it's now tied up one to one the, the future will tell what we have in store for it so i say let's get to it let's get to it match number three between lumberton and hoke and i mean the question at this point remains do we see link again <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> I guess so, in a way, yes, but a better one, right, Muse? Yeah, so two K rules, two links, and then yeah. another link. So this is this is excellent. <laughs> yeah, Young Link is probably the best link in to well, I say that as he is best game, but he is probably considered the best link, uh, especially when it just comes to his data. He has so many tools that are just incredibly fast. His bomb is also considered a little bit better just because of the damage calculation and like better combo potential than Toon Links. We know like Toon Links does have the shroud effect where like you can't mm. see behind it. Um, so then you can do some funny things, choose a different choice. But yeah, after that unfortunate SD, you know, he's got a long way to go, especially against the heavy. Yeah, you're talking about like the fighter compositions here and then it's like well you could be any fighter and still miss your up b so that's the trouble here okay mr danger he can go as low as he really wants to with that vertical recovery <laughs> perfect attack in the air there to take eight and now we're on a three to one stock here mr danger coming out big here 
Danger is just able to do a really nice job to just up that two stocks in 155% not dying now. And you can even see that after even just one uh, tilt from the Young Link, he's not going to go anywhere. So he's got all the time in the world. He can just play a nice zone game and he should do quite well. So far, that's exactly what we're seeing. And Aiden's just getting punished on these very short range attacks. Ooh, all right, the three stock from Mr. Danger, just like that. Have you seen a, kid, a fighter stay on 169% for that long muse? That, that was pretty impressive. Yeah, no, I, that's, that's a, a good sign, especially for this K roll, just kind of coming out, getting three stocks or sorry, three stalking his opponent, right? That's that's going to be really, really tough if you're this young Link. What I'd like him to do, obviously, you know, we can say, haha, no SD, but realistically, you're playing against a K rule. Your bomb can be in incredibly disruptive, especially if you're going to end up throwing it high, throwing it into his face. Uh, so looking to see the young Link try and do that, keep him off of him a little bit more. His fire arrow is also quite good too, just able to disrupt the, the K rule get around some of the belly armor. So just, we're in a game of full zoners. The only zoner we didn't see today so far was the Little Mac. So use it, <laughs> right? They're in the yeah. game for a reason. It may be boring for the user, but at the same time, that's where you have the mastery of this game. If you're going to pick that fighter, you might as well work to your advantage. Exactly what you're saying, you so I couldn't agree more. Let's see in round two if we get the recovery. The Rebellion, the Uprising from our Young Link against the big ol' K. Roll. We head into round two on the next stage. No platforms available here. And Aiden, stay alive, get some damage. That is the key. Get some distance around this K. Roll. Already, though, look at how the distance between them is eviscerated. Mr. Danger takes the battle to him immediately. And really, really tough to see. Or drop down and then look to up to get around the Aiden, but unfortunately not able to do that. So now back in and Aiden already using that one stop is going to try and do what he can against this K roll. That grab and that throw. Mr. Ditch back on it. Oh my goodness, the cannon, the double cannon hits right on Aiden. Surely we don't see another three stocking, but that, the more we see this matchup, that's what it looks like. The crowd into the cannon, into the forward tilt. It's on and on and on again. Okay, cannonball goes the other way that time around. Allows for some vulnerability for Aiden to get up on, but grab the cannon, the belly smash, it's all right back. There, but the dash attack is going to be way too much from this heavy with the rate, or not with the rate, but with the percent, he's going to end up taking this a really, really nice job, 2-0 from this King K rule, and giving that series over to, uh, where was the K rule from? I uh, K rule I had that written down, and then I Hulk. lost my train of thought. So. <laughs> Mr. Danger on Hulk. Yeah, I was, I was thinking the same thing, Muse. I was like, that was, yeah. Hulk, so congratulations as well to Hulk for taking that win. Hulk County over Lumberton. And this started in favor of Lumberton against the K-Roll. So, Muse, crazy how we turned this around at the end of the series that the K-Roll ended up working for Hulk in the end. I uh, gotta tell you, really impressive here. So this has been a battle of the undefeated teams so far in the qualifiers. We have set us our, ourselves up for these near perfect Sand Hills County matches. And so far, we are getting the best of the best. Hoke, get to stay. You can definitely see that there is mastery of a lot of the different characters uh, yeah. or like a lot of the uniqueness of the characters themselves from these players and just tweaking a couple of things and understanding how their character works in certain matchups and they'll do perfectly fine.
Couldn't agree more. There you hear it from Muse, a uh, competitive brawl player himself one day. So take his advice, folks. Don't 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 sneeze at it. But a long folks, time ago. <laughs> ah, a long time ago. Still got to call it out. <laughs> Nevertheless, folks, we've got more undefeated teams. As you saw, Lee County and North Johnson could be playing up against each other for our next match. Remember, folks, this is Vessels Spring 2024 Smash Conference conference qualifiers hundreds of high school teams in north carolina competing for that grand total of twenty five thousand dollars you want to stick right here for the sand hills action we'll be back with that next match after this break
All right, welcome back, everybody. We've got the conference qualifiers for Smash of the Spring 2024 Vessel Tournaments here. Week two of the qualifiers as hundreds of high school teams in North Carolina compete for the $25,000 grand prize. Muse, we just got done casting Hoke County versus Lumberton. Hoke winning out the series in the last two matches. You estimated some great matches today. So far, we're getting it. Yeah, going to game three is always really, really nice to see. You know, this way here, you're not getting any sort of blowout. Game number three of that series may have been a little bit one-sided, but at least the first two games were very nice to see out of both of these uh, types of young squads. So hopefully we'll get something very similar. I'd like to see character diversity. I had, mm. like, a lot of decent knowledge about some different characters and niche matchups, <laughs> and we ended up getting two links or three links in a k roll <laughs> or two k rolls so hopefully we'll ah get well we're 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 of different breeds because personally i just want to see uh three matches of k roll versus k roll uh you know just just crowns and cannonballs as far as the eye can see um this next matchup though folks is lee county versus north johnson two teams that are two and oh as well undefeated so i know you want to get into the smash action so why don't we get right into it let's kick off round one of two more undefeated high schools of the sand hills county this is <laughs> a little diversity uh views but also not really i'll take one new character right somewhere in the middle so uh you know kazia one of the fun dlc characters another one of those really scary characters where you know if you're going to have any sort of flat stage and if they can get on you you, you are almost or most certainly dead i think akazia might have just dodged into that smash attack from julie dragon so gotta be careful if you do want to be the beast on the flat surface below not to dodge into the smash attacks this is a much different little max style that we're seeing here though and uh, yeah, a bit of a mistake there, I think, from Joy Dragon, but uh, a bit less agile, I want to say, or or maybe aggressive style uh, from our last little back here. Yeah, whenever you have these, like, both, both these characters are good also on triplats, just because they have a lot of options that you can kind of get underneath you, get around you, and play aggressive and uh, style with just like, these platforms. But Kazia, the thing that makes him a lot better than Little Mac is, well, number one, that Nair. That's going to send you straight down to the blast zone. But number two, if he actually does get sent off of the stage, he's got a lot of recovery options that Little Mac is really can't touch. And maybe one of the most impressive things to note here is that we haven't even needed to see a lot of those recovery options. I mean, as we see that recovery last time, they were using that laser before they even got up to this stage now we are starting to see it and no wonder they're up to 127 counting and the ko is active so this is oh jolly dragon's chance at getting back into this match that's not gonna happen instead the throw right off the stage using those kazuya mechanics and just able to get that single grab once you end up seeing that flashing bar yeah, he gets that grab, it's over. There's nothing really any character can do. So he's just trying to run at him, trying to get that grab, either force the shield, right? Because if you don't shield and he just does a smash attack, you're also dead anyway. So mm. nicely done from the Kazuya, just able to play a nice controlled game, keep the little Mac off of him, and keep him off stage. Yeah beating him off stage like he was just juggling him around and make, making sure each and every recovery from that Kazuya as well was coupled not only with getting back on the stage but some of those laser attacks as well just to keep the little back player on their toes I think was really impressive from the Kazuya we'll see if that control continues here as we get into game number two still between these undefeated squads of Lee County and North Johnson See if we get those fighters mimicked here as well on the stage as we await the result of that. No. Oh, okay. Wow. Complete switch up here. Julie dragging off the little back and onto the Samus. And we've got Kazi on the Mario. I feel like we're playing melee. Yeah, much, much better now. Two different characters here for us. Mario definitely is an interesting choice coming from Kazi. I guess. Great 
job at that as Mario is all over him here. He's going to far down Oh my, randomly. I really appreciate the aggressive nature of that. You can edge gun back on the stage or you can take the fight to them and jump right off them was that Mario. And that was after all the juggling as well. We're seeing those up there come back to form and looks like that's trying to be the bread and butter of randomly keeping Julie Dragon in the air to rack up those combos. Especially for randomly and what they're doing so well is I think they've begun to read Julie Dragon pretty well. There's a repetitive nature to this attempt at the grab from Julie Dragon and randomly he's starting to read these attacks a bit too well. Now up a couple stocks, dodging that uh, neutral B, which I would love to see charged up and just held on to for the Samus because I think it acts as a great threat, something to keep uh, in the back of your opponent's mind. Yeah, it depends on the type of matchup. You typically want to use a like, full charge shot as a but with Mario, it becomes even harder to use. It can be used as a reflector, then you're reflecting a full charge shot back at you, and now you're the one that's going to use one more combo will do it for this series there's the throw not quite out oh, but delivering the punch down to the blast zone what an explosive exclamation for the mario yeah really nice coverage from the mario in that nice first series and so you know just able to take that nice coverage as the samus was trying to come back to stage just being able to read doing that forward air and just sending them straight down so nice mastery coming out of this first character love seeing the variability as well i feel like for a lot of our high schoolers we've seen that kind of one trick and you know, I'm, I'm not throwing shade at that at all. If you like a character, if you play well, and we've seen even matches through and through, might as well stay confident, stick with that fighter. But, you know, the switch up was was wonderful. You mentioned how Samus could be a good counter to Kazuya. Can't really counter them if your opponent is switching up fighters. So, yeah, great job so far from our Kazuya to Mario character. And now I feel like finally the floodgates are open, Muse. <laughs> when we saw that fighter duel, now we don't know what to expect. Yeah, that makes it a lot more fun, honestly, because now you actually have, you know, a lot more variety. There, it's a game of 81 characters, right? It's, uh, it's always fun to see <laughs> what else you know, someone can kind of pull out of here. I did like, too, that uh, the Mario did something really interesting that mm. typically Mario, you don't want to bring them to Final Destination just because you don't have any platforms. Mario's mm. really well known that, you know, you do a little bit of combo, you hit them up to the platform, you reset your jump with the platform, you hit them all the way up to the blast zone, and then they're off the top. But instead, what he was doing is playing a lot more of a horizontal game, keeping the Samus off, like, just like keeping on the Samus and making sure that Samus was off the stage. Love the fact that one of the most quintessential platformers in video game history of Mario is good on platforms. Uh, that just that just satisfies uh, me. But we'll we'll move on and we'll see what kind of platforms we'll see in the next stage if we get more platformer fighters as we get to our next run and how about this the the sonic i mean what do you make of that uh, well you have one of the most popular characters in the game you have one of the least popular characters in this game so sonic is honestly a top four character in this game he has so much speed he has a lot of invulnerability with side me you know uh just able to do a spin dash right and just able to do a lot of these combos a lot of confirms but Simon, sorry, this, yeah, no, this one's Simon. I almost see, I don't even know the difference between Simon and Mercury at this point. They're so, so far and few in between where we just don't see those characters. And 
honestly, with Sonic, it's going to be a very, very hard to match up with Simon. He's not going to be able to do a lot of these zones anymore because he's so, so bad. Oh, you can tell how difficult that is. I mean, Simon's just getting batted around right now with Johnny already losing their first stock. I mean, you've got to sort of start to really pay attention to what Itch is, is doing with these quick maneuvers and starting to read them as well because I feel like Johnny, as soon as they commit to a left attack, the Sonic is on the right. And honestly, with uh, Simon and Richter, both of the Belmonts, they have a lot more of a horizontal recovery, whereas their vertical recovery is not nearly as good. And this Sonic already has done a couple of spin dashes to... Um, into wow. fair cancels and he even went for that homing attack well off the stage and wasn't even getting a second stock. Now up to three, only 55%, already doing a nice little combo there, getting Simon to actually do high percent. I hope this is a BM. This reminds me of that practice mode in the game where there's just a sandbag that you try and rack up as much damage on and then try to knock out of the park. I mean, this is Itches from Lee County really just having a field day in this matchup. It's a playground out here and they're wrestling around it, hopping on the monkey bars and swinging out to success. Lee County continue their winning spree with Itches on the Sonic. I do talk a little bit about the tier list, but honestly, looking at Itches, he was doing a lot of the, like, fast fall cancels as well. He was able mm. to kind of do, like, uh, especially in that last one, he was able to do, a, like, a quick drop off a stage into the fair, and that was just beautifully, beautifully mm. done. Using a lot of the faults of the Belmonts against them there, not able, again, you know, especially in the Sonic matchup, when you're a Belmont, you're trying to do Holy Water a lot just because you're trying to stop that spin dash coming in on you. But he wasn't even able to really use Holy Water. I think we saw Holy Water about three times, especially during the first two stocks. So he needs to try and just keep the Sonic off of him and just zone. Use your zone tools. Use your side B. Use your Holy Water. Use your whip, right? you got a lot more range than that fast hedgehog. But honestly, the Sonic did a really nice job just getting in there and punishing the Belmont. I'm curious as to whether we see that fighter combination again because it didn't happen in the last set. So let's get on to it. Uh, the second stage of this second series between Lee County and North Johnson. And okay, okay. I feel like this is fair to see the switch up on the Bayonetta. Yeah. Bayonetta is interesting because we have a lot of the things that we talked about. Like, they either think this is a counterpick or they are counterpicks. Right? Depending on which Bayonetta you essentially Either way, because you get two good times just like that, where you get two good times stopping the Sonic combo. But I'm just trying to keep the speed, just get in on Ao and prevent her from doing any sort of her foot combos. Sonic's still able to do a really nice job here, already 110%, keeping the pressure on and taking that. Yeah, it's really tough to get that recovery so early on on your descent back to the stage. It's so readable and uh, one thing that okay We're starting to see out of Johnny is being less readable getting more movement around the stage and not allowing it just to really control the movement on the stage as much but I mean, you mentioned it earlier, Muse. There's just those fast mechanics that we're seeing out of itches, whether it's the cancel out of the fastball or, I mean, just prioritizing these swift movements. It's hard to outpace itches. Tell you what, Johnny, you're you're making for one of the greatest comebacks that we've seen in Smash if you can pull this off, but ah, the victory starts to become more and more unclear as Itches just racks it up. Wants to finish the job right here and we'll call it out smarts, Johnny, on their way back to the stage. Lee County with Itches on the Sonic closes out the series. Yeah, honestly, after seeing that and seeing the two over they look incredibly scary. Sonic is a phenomenal just character in general in this game, but when you are seeing a character that or a student that can put together that character like that, 
well deserved nice 2-0 mm. and i can't wait to see where they go in the future that's the thing is that's why i've been so excited to cover these qualifiers because i knew we were gonna get that team that like raises more than just one eyebrow it's like oh okay this isn't just a qual team this is like a team that's gonna go far and yeah when you have a sonic player like that uh arguable top four fighter in the game that is working to them in such sublime fashion it's one to keep your eye on for sure so yeah i, I mean I'm, I'm curious muse like well what, what's your reaction to this north carolina and high school fighters as we've just gotten through two great matches uh I I impressed with some fair to say it's nice to see when you have a six-year-old game like smash or i i think smash might actually be even older now it might be eight years old is it mm. I Anyway, you have a game Somewhere that's kind there. of <laughs> coming near the end as, you know, the rumors of like a Switch 2 is mm -hmm. happening, which mm -hmm. means there's rumors of probably an Ultimate Deluxe. Yeah. The time, it's nice seeing that the next younger generation is still interested in Smash. And honestly, you're seeing a lot of higher level mechanics that are being implemented by these players already at a young age. It, it's nice to see as somebody who works in the collegiate scene, you know, the next generation. I love to see it as well. I mean, I don't work too much in the collegiate scene as directly as you do. Obviously, I cast a lot of their tournaments. But aside from that, um, I was just a Smash player and a lover at heart when I was in high school and in college. So I, too, like to see the fact that uh, the, the next generation is just as into it. Um, as we see, again, these North Carolina and high school. Scenes. We have really enjoyed broadcasting these matches to you guys today. Be sure to stay tuned for all matches happening in Vessel. It was smashed this week. We'll be back with more action next week. But follow the Sand Hills broadcast because we not only got Super Smash Brothers, we've got Rocket League, we've got Valor, we've got a lot going on with tens of thousands of dollars being on the line for these incredible high school competitors. So Thank you again, one and all, for tuning in today. Congratulations once more to Hope County and Lee County for their wins today. And folks, from all of us here with Vessel, we'll, we'll be happy to see you on next time.